All right, so I um, <clears throat> wanted to review the criteria for an excellent reply. <clears throat> so here we have the distinguished, excellent, good, proficient, basic, marginal, unacceptable. Um, now, I've never gotten unacceptable, uh, but I think I've gotten maybe not even marginal. <laughs> Um, and when I got proficient, um, the assessment passed, uh, the assignment passed. Um, so, um, but I can do at least, you know, that's a 50 and uh, I can do at least, uh, 80 plus. If I do at least 80 plus, it's distinguished. Um, so I think I need to first of all I need to stay in this area right here uh, try to stay in this area right here but uh, definitely understand that if I'm assigned one of these areas uh, why uh, <clears throat> so um, like I said I've never gotten this but um, I need to be I need to be on this side so the distinguished <clears throat> for content alignment with assignment cri assessment criteria is uh, extensive evaluation and synthesis of ideas include substantial original thinking, uh, application of theory and knowledge. Uh, so this is where all original thinking, all unique ideas from me would be in the uh, assignment. The application of, the of theory and literature, in-depth, detailed and relevant application of theory expertly integrates literature to support ideas and concepts. So I think that would be the references. Um, I don't want to overdo the references. Very easy to overdo that. And that's why uh, I think uh, if I try not to supply, when I supply references, it's usually either to support something, I want to support something I said, or um, I'm trying to say something literally. I'm trying to quote something. <laughs> so, and if I'm uh, trying to say something literally, uh, then uh, that's not um, uh, including substantial original thinking. So that's not original thinking. So I need to, uh, <clears throat> I think this is probably why this is included first is uh, because this is probably, uh, th this actually also is a scored the heaviest, um, this, uh, this uh, content. Uh, so what they're saying is that we want to see uh, mostly extensive evaluation and synthesis of ideas includes uh, including substantial original thinking so mostly they want to see me doing this um, and that means <coughs> that they want to see extensive um, analysis a creation of uh, analysis and uh, original original analysis and thinking uh, in the content uh, at least half of the assignment should be that. I think uh, it's uh, ah, the score is here, you see, right? Half is content. So half is doing that. The next half is the application theory and literature, just this one, uh, or the next uh, 40%. Um, and that's actually, that's not going by 40%, right? Um, but it almost almost is half the knowledge and understanding and content. So, do I understand uh, what I have written, and um, have I provided that in writing, um, that analysis and uh, original thinking in writing? What does the writing show? Does it show uh, <coughs> original thinking? extensive uh, see extensive depth and understanding uh, of understanding and uh, exploration beyond key principles and concepts so they'll give me the key principles and concepts right but they want to see an, ex an an extensive depth and understanding and exploration of those key principles and concepts so that means that whatever they gave me like this they don't want me to just comment on that. If I comment on that, then that's okay. I'm proficient, right? <clears throat> but, so they want to see 
is me use that as a root, as an innovation, innovator, to far more extensive uh, uh, analysis, evaluation, uh, and deeper <coughs> exploration of those things, of those points. All right. So that makes a lot of sense. That makes sense. All right. Okay, so the that's uh, that's the fifty and the forty in depth, detailed, and relevant application of theory ex expertly integrates literature and support ideas, support ideas and concepts, and then the other forty presentation writing skills, logical, coherent, and polished presentation, exceeding expectations at this level, free from errors in mechanics and syntax. <clears throat> so there's actually doing. Uh, the logical and coherent and polished uh, presentation um, and then there is uh, you know so for example proficient orderly presentation minor errors in mechanics and syntax um, few or few errors um, but uh, or, or or logical coherent presentation demonstrating mastery free from errors in mechanics and syntax see for free from errors in mechanics and syntax but uh, not exceeding expectations Right, so they give us a typical wireframe, right? But then they're saying, so then they're saying, what do I do with that wireframe? You know, uh, like this, right? If you've got the wireframe uh, humanoid, right? So they give me this wireframe human, right? And then they say, well, what is this, right? And so, if you uh, you could either have a from that well you know to say you're an artist or something um, you know so what is a beautiful human uh, if you listen to propaganda it's a black person right so uh, why because it's a slave right <laughs> they just hear my um, just talking to so what is the beautiful human? Um, the attribute of physical appearance, but also the inner beauty, okay. Uh, hu human beauty, University of Listener. Let's see what the university says. <coughs> that was quite a disgusting uh, display, actually, if you ask me, if beautiful. So, <coughs> all right. These don't even look like beautiful people to me, I'm sorry, but. <laughs> I'm kind of disgusted, actually. Um, so, yeah, whatever. So, um, all right, so this is beautiful human and then the average human. Okay, so these are these are average human photos. They may not look like, now what is a typically average human? Oh, it's, uh, it's Chinese because uh, that's like the most common human on the planet right is uh, so the Chinese facial facial features they uh, would be <coughs> average um, we don't have average okay so an average an average exactly what it means right that it's a statistical midline right so what is beautiful mean Okay, I mean, I have something like this, right? And what makes something, what makes a beautiful human? And that probably requires some, basically, if you're following the the features, the typical, you know, golden mean, golden ratio features, and so on. Uh, so anyway, which one did you do for the human? Now, obviously, the golden ratio number Mathematically, the golden ratio is more um, studied than the average, I believe. And it's, it's there's more mathematical um, algorithms and uh, complexities with the golden uh, golden ratio or the golden mean than the just the average mean itself, a, a statistical average mean itself. Uh, <coughs> so. Would you get more points if you were to, for, you know, which would you get more points for describing, you know, for using? If someone gives you, you know, a wireframe uh, and you use the golden mean on it, or 
um, to carve out the human or you used just averages. So that's the point here. Um, visual, kind of visual uh, um, <clears throat> reference to that. So and then presentation, writing skills and then referencing, advanced use of in-text citation and references. So what would an advanced use of uh, in text citation and references what would what does that what does that imply right okay so let's see what we get for GPT with GPT here precision with multiple authors and dates secondary citations Advanced use of in-text citation references in Harvard style typically implies that you should apply nuanced, precise, and varied uh, citation techniques to ensure clarity and support for arguments. So not only be proficient in referencing, but be distinguished, right? To be excellent. Mastery of in-text citation, appropriate use of in-text citation, or adequate use of in-text citation, right? So limited use of in-text. So I, I, was, <clears throat> I, was, I was average, I was adequate, right? Uh, but we want to be, you want to be, um, you want to have, you know, skill, you want to be distinguished, you want to be excellent and distinguished in skill of using, of using references, right? So the goal is not to be proficient, um, to be adequate. The goal is to be, to be concise, first of all, but to be, like I said, precise, or to be excellent or distinguished with the concise space that you have. The conciseness that you are allotted, allocated. So, precision with multiple authors and dates. Secondary citations, a perfect idea within uh, another source, make it clear. Uh, with the cited in example, for example, Doe 2018 cited in the Smith and Jones 2021, but used sparingly to encourage original sourcing when possible. Advanced integration of author prominence. If focusing on the author's contributions, you might place the author's name within the sentence. Uh, Smith and Jones argue that multiple sources for a single idea when synthesizing multiple sources order them alphabetically and separate each with a semicolon detailed use of page numbers and quotes for direct quotes include page numbers uh, for lengthy and complex quotes okay so what that means is that <coughs> the structure of the reference itself when I give a reference the line structure the amount of information I give in the reference is going to is going to it's going to determine the scale, sparsely determine the scale. All right, so the reference, uh, so the line of references. Um, yeah, so for the example assignment, uh, they didn't give, I think they didn't give a distinguished uh, sample for the assignment. Uh, they gave more like a proficient sample. You know, probably probably one that passes, but not one that is uh, distinguished. Um, so, what does that mean? Um, you know, so they gave the minimum. The sample they gave was for the minimum requirement for uh, uh, <coughs> for the assignment to pass. Um, it was not the max requirement. It was an example a sample of a max requirement of an assignment to pass. So, you know. That helps me. That helps me see the the minimum requirement, but not uh, the maximum requirement. Unfortunately, so um, I guess uh, for them um, it's a good starting point. But for me, I would definitely I would need to target something that is like distinguished uh, to feel that I am safe, that I'm on the right path, and uh, <laughs> that I'm uh, um, not at risk of not passing the assignment, and wasting more time, right? Um, several views do have to be uh, taken usually to get to pass uh, to get the assignment to pass um, uh, and 
um, if it took more than that, usually it was, it's it's not it's 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 me um, passing the assignment to uh, some kind of AI auditor or some kind of software auditor to check the check the assignment and not uh, it wasn't uh, to the uh, actual um, you know checkers themselves to the actual uh, uh, school. Um, the most times it goes to school, I I critically review it through software checkers. Uh, many times could be up to like you know a dozen and two dozen times 10 to 20 times before um, I send it off to the actual uh, uh, assessor or creditor and uh, so so the amount the number of times I have to actually send it to the creditor is probably only about two two or three times all right so um, <clears throat> That goes with that. So um, let's leave it off here. I need to finish this part here. And uh, so if we check the word count here now, it's like 248. So I definitely want to wrap this up. But uh, so I think now I need to get more of a projective orientation on the uh, the wireframe of the assignment that they give me <clears throat> because not only do I need to make it excellent uh, but I, ne I need to project the assignment the wireframe pr project the wireframe so that it remains concise but is more distinguished is more excellent or extensive or deep and so I think that's what they're they're looking for um, they're looking for something that will go out very far it will project itself very far but it will save time and space in that process so project as far as possible but save as much time and space as possible while doing that all right so you have a very deep uh, vector value um, okay but uh, <clears throat> from point to point uses the least time and space to do that so that's the point it's like if they say something they want me to extend that idea out as far as possible without wasting space and time explore it extend it as far as possible without wasting space and time you make contact with whatever the deepest part of that idea is and then move on to the next um, idea, the next point to talk about, the next topic to talk about. Um, so uh, instead of dragging out, you know, things and, and appearing to, you know, cover space, um, yeah, it's the opposite of that. So, um, but I do want to finish finish this uh, sentence here. You know, and because it's very clear that they have this type of methodology, this type of strategy, it's definitely not advisable to uh, try to fill in space. Um, it's better to be proficient to do how they want uh, in a blunt type of way, in a clumsy type of way, than to... Uh, you know, do what they don't want and fill in a lot of space. Uh, but if you're going to do what they want, you might as well do it in the distinguished way. Uh, so, uh, and definitely if you're conscious that you're doing it in the right way, then there should be no problem doing it in a distinguished way. Um, so that should be the part of the precision uh, of the concision so then in the feedback they'll tell me if I had achieved the distinguished uh, precision or not um, and how close I had gotten to that last time I didn't get very close actually they gave me proficient and the they passed me on proficient which is another which is another drawback also like if they pass you then whatever grade they gave you sticks 
and uh, so you know that happened to be uh, proficient on the last assignment so it's not like I can change that I mean I can ask oh can I go back and make that higher maybe you can maybe you cannot um, but uh, I don't know you know until they do it uh, so and I don't know it's kind of like wasting time also right to ask them oh, can I make this higher you know I'm not sure you can I, I do know in China that once you submit an assignment it is not possible to to change it uh, unless it's agreed upon before the uh, submission not this is exactly what I want to see uh, so using these techniques in Harvard style and result in a thorough academically rigorous presentation that clearly attributes and demonstrates a deep engagement with the literature right and uh, deep engagement with the literature I think is uh, said here somewhere in here yeah uh, application of theory and literature in-depth detailed and relevant application of theory expertly integrates literature to support ideas and concepts so this is part of the referencing um, and uh, application theory and referencing if we look at the grading amount application theory and referencing also have the same amount C40 so this 50, these two are closely related and more important knowledge and understanding and content. Closely related and more important than application of theory and literature and referencing. Um, these two are close, are close, uh, <coughs> closely related and less important than the content, uh, knowledge and understanding. So what they want to see in my assignment, in the content of my assignment, is that I... Uh, my level of knowledge and understanding that I know and understand things um, in, to, in uh, support of that they want to see application of theory and literature and referencing just the referencing uh, part of that the only other thing is the presentation of writing skills the actual writing right so they're reading when they're reading they're reading these two things <coughs> content knowledge and understanding first importance and then second importance is the supporting uh, literature, application theory and literature, and referencing, referencing and application of theory. So that's when they're reading. But then there's my writing style, presentation, writing skills, right, which is about me, um, my own writing abilities, uh, which would be uh, related to grammar. And if we read that here, we'll see right, free from errors in mechanics and syntax, right? So this is just the uh, grammar logical coherent and polished presentation exceeding expectations at this level so this is it's like how's your English right it's the presentation of writing skills how's your English uh, which really wasn't related to connected to anything else this was just like this is just how's your English this is the referencing um, and then this is the understanding Now, it cannot be. Now you can see as a proficient, this is this would be failing in the American system, the U.S. system, but in the U.K. system, this is passing. Um, and uh, distinguished, you know, which is just a B, uh, a B grade. In other words, if you got a B minus, that is distinguished. It means it, it's even that's even better than excellent. A B minus is even better than excellent. So. I'm not sure if a UK student would have a hard time in the US system. Um, it depends on which level, I think. Uh, if the UK student is, let's say, is trying to perform on a PhD level, uh, it's possible that at that point they have already, <coughs> the UK system is so, is so concise and precise that at that level, at the master, probably the, the, the master or PhD level, that um, they have gained so much skill and precision and concision that uh, they are able to outperform uh, American students at the precision level or even foreign students who are participating in the American level and the American system. Well, I'll just say the American system. But if this student is used to this type of grading, a UK student is used to this type of grading, and then it comes to the American system, they might find a lot of difficulties let's say in the high school system or the undergrad level um, because they're not used to doing so much work and having to do and and being graded uh, lowly for for what they think is distinguished you know which is the highest uh, levels 
um, for example, if they get a B minus, they'll think that's really good, right? In the UK system, a B minus would be really good, but the expectation in the US system is that a B minus is like, you know, barely, uh, barely trying or not trying very hard. And definitely, if they're used to just performing at proficient level, um, they'll never pass their classes because this is failing 59 um 59 percent or lower is is a fail it does not pass in the u.s system but the good thing with my um the path that i have chosen is that it's not because this is easier although it is but um it's just because i agree with the with the British thinking, I think more. I think that in the long term, the precision has an advantage. It pays off more um, than um, the bulky US uh, system, which is more expensive anyway and more demanding and takes more time. Uh, and uh, in the long in the long run, uh, the precision of the British system, the way the British system uses precision and concision, to to the grad and the post grad level, if you take that at the post grad and post grad level, I think you will do much better than uh, American students. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> and also, um, it is possible in the British system, probably a lot more, that if you have only a bachelor's degree, that you can jump right into the PhD and to get a PhD. So that's which may not be. As traditionally, that you definitely they definitely don't have that as a traditional view in the U.S. United States. It's possible, but they don't have that traditional view. All right, so like like what? Okay, gotta get to that finished. And so because this um, was talking about the most of the examples it gave was about cybersecurity. Uh, the other one was backup, but there was only a couple about a couple about backup. Um, and uh, so we've got updates. Um, passwords, firewalls, uh, antivirus software, passwords again, just data encryption, user account management, passwords again. Uh, so passwords is a big one. Uh, backups. Um, security, um, cyber security, I'd say, including physical, um, unnecessary, again, cyber security. So I think a lot of this is related to cyber security. Passwords are often related to cyber security. Um, the question is, like, how long do you want to make, you know, what, like, like, what's the line between uh, what's the fade between system administration and cybersecurity, you know, a professional and or a system administrator and a cybersecurity, you know, professional. And to me, a cybersecurity professional is more valuable than a system administrator um, as far as this type of thing. Like if you <clears throat> ask a cyber, if you ask a, a system administrator, a system administrator is to take care of the daily, th you know, things of the network, right? Um, you tell them, uh, you know, you need to replace this hard drive or you need to expand this network or some, you need to do some menial tasks, some daily menial menial tasks involving hardware or software updates. This is such a system administrator. But let's say you're a small organization and you can't afford to, um, you know, you can't afford either or, which is the, which is the, the, the better person to hire, you know? Uh, so the cybersecurity person would probably it's probably the better idea as far as you're talking about um, uh, um, <clears throat> protecting protecting your network and um, updating your network, upgrading your network, protecting and upgrading the network. Um, the cybersecurity professional probably is the one who would be more who intuitively have more of that information. The system administrator, uh, I don't think it's going to have as much as be not be as knowledgeable. Uh, or proficient to uh, to protect um, the network, uh, to protect the network. So, um, so it's a question. It's like the trade-off. Um, 
do you need someone to just keep up after your network um, and uh, without knowing like being very knowledgeable on how to protect the network from cybersecurity threats or would you rather have someone that is extremely very knowledgeable about cybersecurity threats and knows something about system administration right and can do you can do those system administrator tasks if you need so it depends on like if you have a small network i would go with the cybersecurity professional cybersecurity professional um they both care about the networks. They just do it in, in, in different ways. But uh, definitely, I think the cybersecurity expert is going to be uh, more professional professional and knowledgeable in this. Uh, it's going to be a higher level uh, job. And I can even ask, uh, we'll ask the AI about that too. But if you have a large network, then you don't want to assign everything to a cybersecurity person, uh, network maintenance, and you don't want to assign you know all your cybersecurity things to a system administrator. You want to have both. Two different. They are two different jobs. Yes, it's a different focus. Okay. While both can be high-level roles, cybersecurity positions are generally considered more specialized and often command higher expertise in specific security domains. Right. So, for sure, and the cybersecurity professional is more like the engineer. The system administrator is more like an administrator. Um, in fact, many times they will tell other technical people to do things instead of doing it themselves. Um, <clears throat> But the cybersecurity, they have to have so many, they have to have knowledge of, of um, software, you know, almost software engineering type of knowledge, but it's more like network engineering knowledge. So as far as network engineers are engineers, then um, yeah, it's very much in that domain. The cybersecurity uh, professional is very much in the network engineering domain. You know, although the network engineer is dealing more with network engineering and cybersecurity is dealing more with cybersecurity. But they're very similar. They're using the same tools, almost doing the same things. Um, <clears throat> yeah. But but cybersecurity is such a such a big angle these days. You know, it's such a big fear word, <laughs> and a lot of people. So people are more likely to pick up a cybersecurity person and say, you know, "Do you want to do you want to play the role of a network engineer or a system administrator?" You know, they'll say, "You know, we need a network engineer or system administrator. Do you want to do it?" Because they know that he has. Uh, at least he's he's very knowledgeable in also in cybersecurity, uh, which will which would you know come in, which would come in handy. Uh, people are very scared of cyber cyber warfare, cyber attacks, hackers these days. They're ultra sensitive to it. Like they were sensitive. Like I mean I don't know why. It must be because like AI was was <clears throat> the hot thing first, and so now it seems like AI and cybersecurity the two just came both together at the same time. So, and also it could be, you know, when you have, a, when you have a, this is, this is actually what I think, when you have a country that doesn't have any enemies, and when you have a country that, that nobody is attacking them, but they still want to think that there is, an, they still want to tell their citizens that there is an enemy, what can they do? They, the best, the best propaganda that you can give them and say like there's a secret enemy there's a you can't see them but they are there and that cyber cyber warfare is the perfect example you know it's the perfect excuse they can tell everyone look there is a fight going on but you can't see it it's called cyber <laughs> right so it's a perfect excuse uh you know uh, to keep uh keep up that game It's called hacking, right? You know, it was just like the 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 uh, the terrorists twenty years ago. Like, where did terrorists come from? Until Americans started talking about them, uh, and then all of a sudden we had these uh, we have these uh, 
diverse group of terrorists that seem to only exist uh, <laughs> if, uh, in American media. Uh, because I lived overseas for a long time and nobody talked about terrorists over there. Um, but, you know, so now we're a little bit more advanced. And uh, uh, so we have hackers are the new, uh, the new problem. But if I ask if I ask AI, what is the biggest threat uh, to the USA these days? Okay, no, no, no. no. Um, let's sorry. You see, cyber number one is cybersecurity threats and cyber warfare. Cyber threats from see. I didn't even let that finish. You see, so um, you know. So if you did, my point is here, if no one's attacking you physically, right, then what can you say to make people still think that they're under attack, that they're still under attack, that they're still being attacked? You tell them that it's cybersecurity threats. It's cyber warfare. And before, before China economy was doing good, and was potentially going to surpass the US economy. There was no talk, absolutely no talk at all from the United States about China being a, being an adversary. But now that it is possible, it's very clear and very possible that China will, will surpass, could surpass the United States as number one. Now the US has completely 180 degrees changed their position on China and regards them as number one, uh, number one, number one threat. This is, this is exactly what they did with Japan in the 80s, okay? And the only way, <coughs> see, economy, Japan during 80s economy was in a boom, Japan, right? Did Japan peak in the 80s? Why did they have so much money in the 80s? Japan was at its economic peak in the 80s, right? So in the 80s, in this time, um, uh, Japan was, yeah, I guess probably the Americans like Japan, but then Japan was was beating the U.S. economy. It was becoming number one. And uh, this is when I was in my teens, my early to mid teens. And uh, <clears throat> during this time, there was Japan bashing. Um, the Americans started attacking the uh, the the Japanese, and when the U.S. when the Japan economy re receded. To number two again the Americans stopped the Japan bashing so it is no it's, it's it's exactly the same as this what they're doing right now they're they're basically doing China bashing um, and they won't stop until China is number or China's number two again and there's no risk of them becoming number one um, again and uh, this is this is that's all it is it's 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 china bashing it's japan bashing right you see this uh u.s china bashing reminiscent sorry reminiscent of japan in 1980s right here the asset A recurring question every year is whether something similar is going on with china china's a top supplier of machine tools they keep becoming number one and uh yeah so so uh you know who, who's the problem here you know who's causing the problem right i mean in fair and free and fair markets the americas loves to talk about the free and fair markets well if it's so free and fair then you, then you're not going to stay number nobody can stay number one forever because that's not free and fair if if someone stayed number one forever that would be that would be an autocracy that would not be a democracy <laughs> Especially if it was enforced 
by by violence and propaganda and bashing people threatening people bullying people uh, so i don't think that you know america is a free and fair system at all if it was then they would not be doing this china bashing japan bashing china bashing so that's not saying that i think that japan and china is a free and fair system either you know but i'm not saying that america is either just because china J J china japan is not doesn't mean that that gives further proof that america is a free and fair system is applying a free and fair system they are not you don't copy china uh china's uh, unfairness unfreeness and unfairness to claim that you are free and fair yourself that's not that is that's not uh, rational and see this they're setting a double tariff so oh you want to buy chinese electric cars evs double the price us and canada says double the price oh but the, do they want them doing that that uh, to american products in china they manufacture the products in China. Anyway, China builds, manufactures everything and then sends it back to the U.S. Ridiculous. And so anyway, this is the point I have here is that, you know, not only is this an international view, you know, not only an international view, but so ask the question, what's the biggest threat to the, to the U.S. after AI was made available to the public in 2024, you know, such as these chatbots and so on, these LLM large language models. And it says that, oh, it's cybersecurity again, but it's AI enhanced cybersecurity. So right around the time that AI came out, was public, um, cybersecurity became a big issue too. So it's more like AI created cybersecurity problems. Uh, this is the big thing. And there's con constantly a race, so constantly concerned about China becoming a, uh, become an AI, um, <clears throat> or other adversaries becoming AI superpowers, leading AI. And so that's why the United US has to spend more money, spend more billions of dollars on on it, on AI, to keep up. They literally said to keep up with uh, adversaries, so-called adversaries like China. But the problem is that they are borrowing money in order to spend that money, to budget, allocate budget to that. They have to borrow money from uh, using uh, using interest, uh, and that comes from the, their main borrowers are China and Japan. Um, so uh, they're literally borrowing money from China to protect themselves and to grow, uh, to grow, uh, 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 to invest in cybersecurity, um, and call China an adversary and to protect and defend against. China so I mean I don't know if that makes sense it's like saying you know <laughs> it's like telling a business hey I need to borrow money from you and when the when they ask what is this money for they say uh, well it's to protect uh, it's to protect me from you in case you attack me do you, what do you think that they're going to give you that why would they give you that money when well, first of all that's not a very good form of trust and the way banks lend money these days, I don't see any bank saying that. If I went to, if I took, if I took as an investment as a plan, to to my bank, you know, let's say uh, to to Citibank, okay, I want to get a loan. I apply for a loan at Citibank, and I tell them, I need a hundred thousand dollar loan, a ten million dollar loan, and they'll say, what are you using the loan for? Tell us exactly. They're going to ask you exactly what you used the loan for, right? They're going to check your history, and they're also going to check your future. What are you going to use the loan for? And you tell them, I'm going to use this loan because I think I'm going to create something that protects me against you. I need to do this, but I need to ask you for the money. I mean, first of all, you've got to have some really big balls to do something like that. And second of all, they're going to say no anyway. I mean that's a quite a stupid question, honestly. If you ask me, it's a very it's it's a very childish question too. I mean, you don't ask. First of all, you don't you don't take money from people, and then call them your adversary and enemy. And you definitely don't tell them that 
the money that you're borrowing from them, you're going to use against them. These are like simple financial rules. These are, I mean, like if you're going to call someone your adversary and enemy, you don't borrow money from them, okay? And you definitely don't tell them that you're going to build uh, uh, defensive and offensive capabilities specifically to protect yourself from them, from the lender, the person that you're borrowing from, borrowing money from. That's just, that's weird. But the truth is <clears throat> that they're not only doing this, the U.S. has rooted in China massive manufacturing uh, processes including, for example, Apple computers, Apple manufacturing, but not only that, rare earths, uh, technology machines, tech, you know, uh, you know, uh, of various technologies, um, and on and on, textiles and, and on and on. Regular household appliances, computers. You know, the United States tries to point a finger and make fun of China's, of China, whatever they are they are possible they possibly appear deficient but the truth is that massive amounts of manufacturing is rooted of US manufacturing is rooted in China massive amounts of companies of private corporations private business names are operating in China massive amounts of money are borrowed the US government treasury borrows from China They're the number two lender. The only person, if there is anyone else, the only other country that borrows more money to the United States than China is Japan. So for America to, to turn around and say that it has to defend itself in cybersecurity, from China in cybersecurity, that they are this adversary, this cybersecurity adversary or enemy, is very very childish the first thing they have to do is cut off all borrowing that they are doing from that country if they are serious about cybersecurity threats from China but they're not serious and that's why they're going to keep borrowing money from China and you will see in the policies every day that really all they're saying in the news about cybersecurity threats from China is just going to be bulldozed over, it's going to be smoothed over, and you're not going to see any problems from it. And that's exactly why. This is why. And in my opinion, it doesn't make America look, doesn't benefit them at all. It just makes them look childish. It makes them look like a child. and also a very dangerous and ignorant, uh, violent uh, aggressor, aggressive person. You know, I, I went to a university that was next door on the same block to the Federal Reserve in San Francisco. And every day when I, it was attached to it, right next to it, attached to it, bridged to it, was uh, a law library or a law school and you know you realize that when you when you you have to think for yourself and you realize that when you think for yourself that uh, what is that what is really true there are there's things that are true and there's things people are telling you okay like propaganda in other words and in the United States I would I, I think that there's a very high level of propaganda uh, for example um, African culture the Africans the black people are only one in ten of our citizens of people in the United States but African culture itself is overwhelmingly represented on billboards and advertising in media in music in entertainment especially if you 
the, no one can dispute this. Just look at the advertising. If you're if you're surfing online in the United States, and the next advertisement that comes up, do you see a black person in it? How many of those advertisements do you usually see? Nine out of ten advertisements. How many times do you see a black person? But it's only one out of ten people in the United States are black people. That's propaganda. Um, that is not. That's the opposite. That's an example of the opposite of thinking for yourself. So when you think for yourself, you start to see that, in fact, it doesn't make any sense. What really is the position of the United States? Borrowing money with China being the second largest lender to the U.S. Every time the United States needs money, and they need money all the time, and they're always complaining they don't have enough money to keep the government open, and they're always saying that they're going to spend more money this time, a record number of money, billions and billions of dollars. They need $50 billion, $70 billion for cybersecurity. But guess what? Guess who they're going to borrow most of that money from? China. And guess who the cybersecurity is planned to protect themselves from, to protect the U.S. from? China. If you're using your own mind, does that make any sense at all? What type of sense that it makes? It makes nonsense. It's it's that's child thinking. Even China wouldn't do that. No other country would do that. What other country would call would 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 call a country their adversary and enemy, and then turn around and tell them, "I'm going to use this money to protect myself from you." Ridiculous. This is like a, it's like a, it's like a, a, a wife that marries a man and then complains. And when the wife is living with the man, then the wife starts complaining uh, that she's being abused. Well, then leave the fucking relationship. Stop living in the house. Get out of the house. You're a free person, intelligent, with an intelligent brain. Get out of the house and divorce. You know, what, what really I don't understand is, you know, I think personally, I think China's being too nice to the United States. Why doesn't the China, why doesn't China cut off all of uh, the borrowing it gives to the U.S.? Do you think it's advantageous that they give so much money to the U.S.? They have, everyone complains that the U.S. dollar is losing value and that they want to separate from the US but what is the response well the US is going to threaten everyone they don't like that they'll start wars but they can't do it with China because China's got them by the balls they'll cut off their financing cut off their manufacturing you see so the US is playing a dangerous game with China and it's 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 not it's not China that's the one that's in danger you know I mean, literally everything, China produces everything for the United States. Um, infant formula, baby formula, pharmaceuticals, medical supplies. During the, during the pandemic, we were the last ones, the U.S. was the last to get masks. We couldn't even produce our own masks. We had to wait when masks finally came like a year later after we needed them, when masks came, they all said made in China on them. And it told you exactly what factories they came from in China, in fact. Now, did, did America say anything about that? No. I mean, it's beyond stupid. It's beyond stupid. They want you to forget the details. They want you to forget the real situation. And they just want you to, they just want to put out this bad news about China as if it's going to do, if it's, it's, it's going to cover up the actual situation that they're in. The actual relationship, and even the actual relationship, the actual official relationship they have with China. <clears throat> which is, they agree with Taiwan, they agree that Taiwan is China. You know, um... Uh, there's so much evidence that the U.S. is going to act peacefully 
with any type of China conflict and they're going to agree with China then there is uh, evidence about all of the propaganda that they constantly put out in, in the media all of those accusations that they constantly put out in the media and any accusations that are put out in the media they never supply evidence it's very rarely they can point of course obviously sometimes they can very rarely point pinpoint like literally needle pin head point to an incident uh, where there was some adversarial threat that China initiated against against uh, the United States but the vast majority of the time 99 percent of the time the media that the that the, the US media is putting out negative information negative uh, reports about China the vast majority of it is not um, backed by evidence so that's why I said actually the exact opposite the evidence supports the exact opposite the historical uh, bureaucratic legislative agreement that US has made with China all indicate smooth uh, smooth transitions during roughness smoothness during roughness I just don't like getting caught in the middle of it that's what I don't like in 2000 when I went to China they were considered friends during the Obama era they gave us 10 year visas two months days at a time intern intern exit as I pleased then Xi Jinping came into office and the Chinese government and the US government started to act adversarial towards each other and every all of us private citizens us individual citizens that were trying to build lives being friends with the Chinese people our lives are ruined because of this stuff because these governments can't make up their mind this 10 years they're friends the next 10 years they're adversaries the next 10 years they're friends and you know what that what that uh, political logic ultimately works out to as an American as an American the only choice the choice that I have is the only the only person the only country I can consider my friend are the are the ones are the countries are those nationalities that have that America has beat and oppressed beat to a pulp and there's no threat of of retaliation from in other words who is that aka Japan or any other ally right that either is a native English speaker because that's very unlikely they'll be against us or a country that we have literally beaten and there's no there's no threat and they have agreed to be submissive versus America versus the United States and that is that's Japan that's what happened in Japan with the Japan bashing in the 80s it's very sad that I have to consider myself an American, a citizen of one of these countries, a country like this. I mean, they say they value freedom, but no, that's, that's totally hypocritical. It's totally opposite. The only people they value are the people that they have that, that don't challenge them, okay? That remain under their foot. I would much rather be a citizen of New Zealand or some other neutral country yeah so um go figure right so I'm trying to finish this so anyway so Matty Aharoni Ross the Roni the San Francisco treat Matty Aharoni creator of Kali Linux and uh, uh, regular attendee of DEF CON uh, along with all the other gold-haired People. Love, love, love somebody attacking me in a cyber loving. Right, whatever.
off sec. Matty Roney off sec. Um, there's what I'm looking for is a company that uh, he founded. Um, it's a website actually. Um, and uh, let's see, off sec, months I owe. Uh, let's see, I think this has something to do with it, months I owe. Um, backtrack, such as backtrack. Offensive security, maybe it's a. Uh, Maybe it's offsec. Maybe it's backtrack. No, it doesn't sound like it. Backtrack links, no Cali links. Um, there's a website where they report um, vulnerabilities. Is it the exploit database? Maybe it was that one. Exploit DB. Yeah, I think it's this one. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah, that's what I want to put in there. I'm trying to think of how to word this. Got to be a little professional about this. Like a pirate cyber attacks on on an attack surface. On an attack surface. And then, uh, so what? What was the line here? The standard extensive. Yes, yeah, the extensive. So if I say an extensive. But an extensive depth of an extensive exploration. <laughs> That's something, right? An, ex an extensive exploration of. of uh, I'll put, yeah, I'll, I'll put uh, HTTPS exploit dash db. Features. Uh, uh, well, but uh, explain TV now. What features? But deals deals in uh, an extensive deals in extensive exploration of. Attack of known attack services or vectors. I don't know what like a powered cyber attacks on an attack surface. Hey, what's the difference with attack surface and vector? See whether people like it or not, right? See, people had to deal with AI whether they liked it or not. Because in 2024, the technology changed to this environment. So whether people wanted to use AI or not, they have to to stay relevant. Whether people want to be concerned with cybersecurity or not, they have to. 
to, right? You know, myself, I don't consider, like, I consider it an adversarial point of view. AI is not an adversarial point of view. You know, AI is just about, it's exactly what it says, artificial intelligence, right? AI is intelligence. It is not, you know, adversarial by nature. Intelligence is not adversarial by nature. But cybersecurity, security means that you're either on the offensive or defensive. It is adversarial. You know, because you think there's an adversary. Now, everything has adversaries. Medicine has adversaries, which are biological diseases. But when you start talking about nation state actors, that's too much. That's that's going way too far. You're way out of line. And as a com as as a computer science any any person that was becoming a computer scientist, just because you you um, choose computer science path doesn't mean you choose the Department of Defense path. Doesn't mean that you're choosing the military government path. Okay? I mean, but I mean, you know, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, you know, I mean, he was, when he was making Facebook at Stanford, being an idiot, making Facebook at Stanford, and thought he was going to make millions of dollars. Did he think that that was going to have government applications? I mean, is this the type of person that everyone should be? Is eventually I'm going to be a military contractor, so that's why I'm going to do this? Right? I mean, is that how everyone, every successful person has to think? Like, eventually I'm going to do this for the military, I'm going to build things for the military? and do this for the military. So whatever I think it is, however fun I think it is, whatever kind of face album I think I'm making, eventually it's going to be a mil it's going to have military application. Is that the the business reality we we live in? That we have to live in? Yeah, that's what they said about Einstein. You know, Einstein was they appreciated him for his genius. They used his work. But at the same time, they did not invite Einstein into the into the application of his work, into the applications to the military when it was had to be used for military applications. He was not invited. He was kept out because he was considered a security threat, a security risk. Even though there was like maybe he was maybe he was, I don't know that much about his personal life but as far as I know he was an ally he was a friend to the US but this is it I mean it's either whatever you choose in academia it's like there's no choice if the if the military and the government they have their own agenda and whatever you do they don't care if you like it or not they will either they will use you for whatever they need if they need to make you quiet for whatever they need they will do that too if they think you can go along with them they will do that i mean it's just like it's involuntary there's no there was there's no choice there so this is this is not a free a free society that's not a free society i'm gonna call this one done the tech vectors uh and the more I trust you, trust me, the more you go into this, the more you're going down an ethical, a moral rabbit hole. That's all I have to say. The more you're tempting yourself to uh, be in violation of someone's laws. This only, look, this only goes like, I mean, you know, this becomes very polar, this type of thing. Because you're dealing, when you're dealing with uh, security, it's defensive or offensive. And the first thing that's going to pick you up is governments. And the second thing that's going to happen is you're going to have an adversary. You'll have an ally, but you'll also have an adversary. And that means that the better you get at this, the more your adversaries will be interested in you. Which means, and another word for adversary is enemy. So 
this is a dead end. This is for this is cybersecurity is for like suicidal people. I mean, you know, I mean pe people that are like hey, you don't mind you don't mind all that stuff. That's fine, but you know I prefer to I prefer uh, to be I'm more of this kind of person. This uh, they call himself Ryan uh, Ryan. Uh, What's his name? Oh, let's see what his name. Ryan. Ah, Ryan. Brian. Brian Johnson. <laughs> Brian Johnson. The blueprint. Blueprint for health. Okay. You know this guy. He he made the first thing he did. How he made his eight hundred million dollars was from a cash app. Okay. He made a cash app, right? Cool, cool. You're helping people pay their bills. Cool, cash app, get paid. Next thing he did is create a health movement, healthcare movement, okay? That's what I'm talking about. All this guy, all he cares about is getting laid every day, okay? I mean, I followed this guy for a long time, right? And this guy's not, he doesn't care about it. He, he knows what I'm talking about. He doesn't care about cybersecurity. Let other people care about that stuff and get killed. That's all I have to say about that. That's all I have to say about that. Good luck. Good luck, governments. Leave me out. Thank you.